about few, uh, I won't say rare, but uh, reasonably rare injury compared to your distal radius fracture and scaphoid fracture. Uh, <clears throat> but these injuries, uh, uh, you will see during your orthopedics and uh, in uh, training. So we'll go through them and mainly tell you concepts of uh, carpal instability. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Yes, it's sir. all clear, sir. Okay. So first of all, as uh, Apur was mentioning, uh, all of you should not take anything gar given or guaranteed. Whatever we're teaching you today, most likely uh, this will be uh, obsolete or outdated in about 10 years' time. So uh, Apur has kept the logo very nicely. Learning should never end. So whatever we're teaching, it's not something written in stone. That's the beauty of science, that we keep changing and we keep auditing our own uh, results and then come up with the new ideas. Uh, even what we're teaching you today, uh, I must say uh, we have other faculty, Professor Gopa Kumar today, uh, and uh, most of the time the other faculty. We all put a lot of effort into this teaching. Uh, for one hour lecture, we do search recent advances and other things to give you in the best easy way for you to understand. But even then, sometimes we may be wrong in our knowledge or we may be wrong in the delivery of the knowledge. Sometimes it's, it's delivery that we cannot convey what we want to convey. So if you got anything not understood, ask us questions and we will come back to you. Sometimes we may have to review our own uh, knowledge and then come back to you. But this is interactive and that's the fun of it that nobody is 100% right. The other thing I want to talk about is, uh, is so-called vertical thinking versus lateral thinking. So nowadays with super specialization, we, 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 we try to be very detailed in one topic and somehow forget the broad spectrum. Uh, at your level as an orthopedics trainee, whether you're just done or whether you are a junior consultant, what matter is a breadth of knowledge rather than depth of knowledge. So you will uh, need to know a few urgent and emergency treatment. Uh, and all of you expected to deal with that open fracture, compartment syndrome, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and acute dislocations. Also standard plating and nailing of uh, diaphyseal bone. But there are certain things which are beyond your scope or beyond our scope, because nowadays we get two specialization, but you should know the principle of it. In the, in the exam, even if you don't know how do you do this, uh, you should know in principle, this is what you do. So that's what we expect when we do our FRCS exam, which normally in England is about uh, after six years of training, that is an exit exam. Once you've done your three year MS plus three year senior residency, then that exam is at that level. I'm sure MS is very similar to that version of you. So you are expected to know the emergencies and you're expected to know the principle of definitive treatment at your stage. And that's what we will go through this topic because this topic, some things can be a bit complex. So don't worry about it if it is complex, as long as you understand the principle of it. Uh, so uh, we can start with an, uh, Abhijit. Abhijit, what do you see there? Uh, who are the people who are participating, uh, Vishal? Sir, uh, Abhijit and uh, uh, Nagarjuna are right now here, sir. There are other two guys. Uh, they are our uh, Nishant and Dilip. They'll be joining in some time. Dilip and Nishant, they'll be joining in some time. Okay, so it's uh, at the moment Abhijit and Nagarjuna. Nagarjun. Okay, yeah. so why don't you keep both of them on mute? Yes, sir. I'll do okay. that. Okay, and, and just talk one by one who's over. I think Abhijit, we can begin with you. Uh, Abhijit, what do you see there? Uh, sir, it is a AP and lateral view of uh, this joint uh, mm -hmm. with the uh, 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 distal radioulnar joint. Uh, uh, there is uh, abnormality in distal uh, radioulnar joint. Mm -hmm. What abnormality? Uh, Okay, keep talking. Okay, that, I, I, I probably agree with you. It may not be a proper view because for actually assessing this to your radial node joint, normally you need a standard view 
uh, and you need the opposite side. But yeah, the ulna look a bit short. But yeah, at the moment, let's say I ignore that. Anything else you see? Uh, Lunet, sir. Uh... Okay, Nagarjun, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, so can you help him to uh, describe this X-ray to me? Uh, sir, it is a plain X-ray AP and lateral view of uh, wrist joint, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, in AP view, we can see that there is negative ulnar variance. Ulna is shorter when compared to that of the articular surface of radius, sir. Okay. And uh, in the lateral view, uh, there appears, lunate appears to be in the fossa of the distal radius, but the hand appears to be dorsally subluxated. Excellent. So hand, hand doesn't seem to be uh, uh, following it. So uh, what is the normal AP and lateral uh, relationship of carpal bones in normal AP and lateral? Do you know? When you in the exam, what do you say when you say this AP doesn't look right? Uh, although you haven't picked up why it doesn't look right, you have picked up the ulnar uh, variance, which is good. On the lateral, you just think the hand is a bit gone dorsally. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so when you describe an X-ray uh, in uh, in uh, in in your day-to-day -day practice, uh, especially when you're thinking of carpal injuries, think of few lines and few orientations. So in AP view, just look. This is a lower end radius. Can you see that? Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yes. And these are the uh, carpal. So carpal can be divided into proximal row and distal row. So proximal row, you got scaphoid, you got lunate, you got trichotrum. PC form is there, but we generally ignore that as a carpal bone. So that's a sesamoid bone on FCU. So you, you, you can ignore that. So those main three bones there. And the four bone on the distal row will be trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Yeah. And just to, uh, the, the radiocarpal joint and the midcarpal joint is this is a midcarpal joint, this is a radiocarpal joint. Just draw a line from the base of the proximal end of the proximal row, and you see this line almost round, may not be 100% round, but roundish. Can you see that? Yeah. And then the low, same carpal bone, but distal end, and that should also be round. And it should match with the, because this is a joint, midcarpal joint is joint, it should match with the proximal end of the distal row. So these are the three lines you have to draw. So can you see those three lines? Yeah? Yes, sir. And on the lateral view, if you're describing it, think of a straight line from radius to lunate to capitate to third metacarpal. Yeah? And describe them as a like a plate, a cup, and something on the cup, um, and whatever you say, an apple, banana, or whatever this capitate is. Yeah? And then this should follow a metacarpal. So roughly it should be 5, 10 degree here and here. doesn't matter, but that's how it should be. Can you see that? Yeah? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's go back. Um, uh, now describe that. Abhijit, uh, so these three lines, do you know the name of these lines, Abhijit? Um, no, sir. No, so they are called Gilula's line. Okay, so they call Gilula, G I L U L A, Gilula's line, the three lines of Gilula. So, uh, can you see the Gilula line here, or can you describe what is happening to Gilula's line there? So, this is your uh, this is your scaphoid, leonate, trichotral. Can you see that? Yeah, yes, sir. the proximal line seems to be okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, seems not too bad. But what what happened to the distal line? There is no gap. There's a this is disturbed here. Can you see that? There's overlap here. You cannot make beyond this uh, the other line. The line is coming here, and then the bones are overlapping here. Can you see that? Yeah? Yes, sir. Yes. So the Gilula line cannot be clearly demarcated in the distal side. So something is happening in this mid-carpal row that bone is overlapping with each other. Yeah. Yes. Come to this then. Can you see this uh, radius and the lunate? Yeah? Yes, sir. 
you yes, need sir. to you need to start identifying bone on the lateral ap is easy you got scaphoid unit uh, tricuteral and the, this round bit is the pisiform and and two bones here trapezium trapezoid capitate hamet all of you should know these naming of these bones but here can you see that uh, this is your the cup okay. this is your plate this is your cup on where is the apple gone nothing there it's empty yeah and if you follow this this is the capitate can you see this yeah yes sir. and and the scaphoid in the lateral view should be like this 45 degree oblique but can you see where the capitate is this should have been here this has gone here so there is a dislocation from lunate to capitate can you see that yes sir so because it has dislocated around the lunate uh, it was nagarjuna was saying the hand is lo uh, uh, look like gone uh, dorsal he was right it is gone dorsal but from which joint it has gone dorsal from lunate yeah, onward yeah yes sir. so because it's gone lunate onward we, what will we call it perilunate dorsal yeah. dislocation what will your uh, diagnosis perilunate dorsal dislocation yeah you understand now yes sir yeah so that's your perilunate uh, dorsal dislocation